Hey guys, it's Monica here. I am so excited to introduce you to Real Estate Fight Club's newest partnership, Cyberbacker. Cyberbacker is the best in the business for virtual assistants. How do I know this? Because I am a Cyberbacker customer and I love this company. I have my favorite, Frances. She is my Cyberbacker, been with me for over a year. She's amazing. She makes me better. She's eager to help. She's on time. She's disciplined. She's awesome. And this company, Cyberbacker, has figured out the system from the interviewing process to find out what I need to the interviewing process to interview several Cyberbackers to the onboarding process to the training process. Very buttoned up, very awesome. You and I both know it's time for you to leverage. It's time for you to take that step and Cyberbacker is a really safe, awesome solution. Make sure to mention Fight Club and you will be getting a free gift. All right, do it, make the call, see ya. Well, hey everyone, I would like you to meet my mom. Her name is Becky Sharon, hey mom. Hi, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. Great. <laughs> Now, the reason why I wanted to bring my mom on is because she's actually a brain health coach. And mom, I want you to explain what that is. She um, is accredited through, what is it called, Amen? The Amen Clinic, right. The Amen Clinic, which is like the premier health coaching or brain health coaching, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. she's actually getting her PhD also in brain health. So mom, will you tell us a little bit uh, about what brain health is and then i want to segue into talking about like how it can help us as realtors okay sure well brain health you know the brain is where everything starts it's where our memories wow. live it's it's where we think it's what we point to when we mean our mind we right. point to our brain so it function it does it takes care of every function in our body and so brain health to me is so very important for aging, for understanding what stops us from getting where can we Can you want stop to us from aging? It, well, you... it can help you age more gracefully, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Longevity <laughs> can, it really can. It's kind of amazing That's what's cool. possible when you really understand all of the conversation that goes on inside your head. Yeah. That, People can't hear, but it sure sounds like people can hear what you're thinking inside your head. Yeah, mine sounds like you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's like a good segue because we do talk a lot about that. It's like, yeah, the conversations you have in your head and like, we all know that we're like so mean to ourselves in our head. So like one thing that we deal with as agents that you and I have talked a lot about is we, it's a cold call commission sales job, right? And so we know we need to call people and we don't because of all the crap that we're saying. So like, can you help us? I don't know, like make that stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what? We might not want it to stop, but okay. we want, may want to recognize what that is. What is that talk in your head? What's that conversation going on? Where did it come from? Yeah. Like, it sounds a hundred percent true. It does. Like, it sounds real and true and absolute. Well, it's so, like mine says like, well, I don't want to like bother them. It's, it's too early to call. Like they don't know me or like they do know me. Like they're my relatives, but I don't want to like, I don't, I don't want to I don't wanna. It's, yeah. I don't wanna. I don't feel like I don't wanna. I can't. It's all of those I don't want us. Right. Or we go do it and we go, okay, and you take a deep breath and you hold on and you muster all the strength you can and then you rush through it. I did it. Right. Yeah. I did it. It's done. <laughs> it's done. I'm done. That's all I could do today. I'm exhausted. Yeah, I just won. <laughs> they were mean to me. I'm done. I can't do it again. They were mean to me. Yeah. And and really all of that. And it's, it, sound, it may sound cliche even, it's called a limiting belief. Okay. We have limiting beliefs that we are aware of, we hear, and then there's a whole bunch of them we don't even hear. We don't oh. even recognize. Okay. So part of the conversation that goes on our, in our head, well, most of it is actually made up from 
our beliefs from from the time we can remember anything, from even before. You know, it's beliefs that have been instilled in us from childhood. Like there's this great story, I love it. And it's about this young girl and her mom and they were cooking dinner. They were cooking a big family dinner, some birthday dinner or something. And the, um, the young, her daughter takes out the ro her roast and she's gonna put it in a pan and she cuts the ends off and she puts it in the pan and puts it in the oven. And the mom goes, why are you cutting off the ends of the roast? And she goes, because that's how you did it. And that's how grandma did it. And she stopped and her mom started laughing. She said, that's because the pan was too small. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that belief we take with us, like it's an absolute truth. And right. there's so many of them. We believe things like, you know, I was born this way. I was just born this way. This is how I am. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so when we look at those beliefs, if they are, if we look at where we're going, we want to be a real, real estate agent. We want to be excess, successful. And we know the number one thing is we actually have to make calls. Right. Like that's the very first thing you tell me all the time. They have right. to make calls. Right. <laughs> and then the we know that and yeah. we go get our education and we do everything we need to do. And then it comes time to make the call and we just stop. We freeze. Yeah. And so it's first like, what is going on in your head? I can't, I don't feel like it. They're gonna, you have all kinds like of- Like I'm not, I don't know what to say. I don't know what they're gonna say. Like, what if they don't like me? What if, what if they do? Like all this, <laughs> right? What if I don't know what to say after they say, okay. Right. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Yeah. And, and, and those are all predicting something. It's like you're making up the future instead of going, I have to make a call. Here's my script. The next thing is to pick up the phone and make a call. Or the next thing is to pull out my cell phone and make a list of the people that I need to make with their phone number mm -hmm. for an hour. And then the next hour, I'm going to call all those people. However you structure your day, when we get anywhere where our brain goes, oh my gosh, this is new. I don't know this. I might not know this. I don't know. And it starts with a lot with I don't know this because I've never experienced it. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to do it. I don't know. I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to be judged. I don't want to be whatever. Right. But it's interesting. You know, when we were kids, when you were a little girl and I said, you're going to go to gymnastics. Like if you'd never, you, you know, you remember probably your first day of gymnastics being, you know, how did you feel? <laughs> Scared. Scared. And you probably had all kinds of thoughts like, what? Right. Like, I don't know how to do anything. I don't know. Like, I'm not as good as them. Right. And then what happened after you went 10, 11, five, two times? I mean, I happen. liked it. I still wasn't as good, but it was fun. <laughs> you had fun. You were, you know, you had fun. You knew what to expect. You got to be with your friends. You knew that maybe you could go get something, you know, like go get some ice cream afterwards, whatever that was, it became a, a habit. It became right. comfortable. Right. Right. But when we're adults, guess what? There's no parent going in saying, you have to do this. <laughs> right. Right? Right. So, that, so somehow when we get to be adults, we think that that conversation has much more meaning. Like, we know oh, that, that has to be sense. true. Right. right. Well, because it is like, I can see that it holds more weight because it's like actually in our voice. Like it is us talking to us. Right. Yes, it's not from the outside, it's actually inside. It is. So outside. how do we, how can we like get over that? Or how can we, what do we, what do we do from like, a, how can we fix our brain? Yeah, so I think that's a really good question. So what are some of the ways you've tried? How did you get over that? What were some of the things you did? Well, you remember? yeah, I do. I mean, yes, because making calls, for me, I learned how to do that from when I was at Career Builder. And so the way that I got over it was like, that's the only way I could make money. <laughs> so I needed money. So I was like, if this is what I have to do, I mean, that was what I was measured on. So I did have like, not a parent, but like a boss that was like, you have to make this. And he had like, he recorded us. So it's like, we were tracked. It was like, you had to be on the phone for this amount of time. You had to make this many dials. You had to set this many appointments. And like, so I had to. And then I remember the second phase was I made it a game. So I would play a game with myself. That was like, okay, well, if I, you know, set this many appointments or made, got my numbers, then I could just leave. 
but then I also couldn't leave when I didn't. So there were times I was there until like eight or nine at night getting through the game. Like I made it like Mm -hmm. a bingo game. Right. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is really great. First, you have to decide, you make a decision that this is how you get to where you want to be. It's actually, you made a decision. Like you went down this path and all of a sudden you had to decide. Yeah. Yeah. It was like my back was against the wall. Right. And many times it takes a decision not just Mm. a goal, Mm. a decision, because see, we hear those voices a hundred percent. When we make a decision, it's a hundred percent also. That's true because there's so many times, like when you make a decision, it's like all of a sudden it's like the light goes on or like, it's like a switch. It's like, Oh, and then it's like kind of floods, but there are still times though. And I'm like, even now, I mean, I've been doing it for like 10 years, but even now it's like, I don't feel like it. Right. But they're going to be, you're not going to stop that voice. You're not going to stop it. It's automatic. Can we make it quieter? Um, I find that it, the way to quiet. Okay. So you can quiet it, but it's not quieting. Like maybe you are saying it gets lower. It actually gets quiet when you actually recognize that that is a, just a thought. And what I do is say, okay, so what other thoughts can I have? Like I actually start asking the voice a question because the voice is me. There's other thoughts. I just didn't have any. I haven't stopped to ask it. So it's going to do the first response, whatever it is. And it's likely from like, say you went to bed a little later than normal. So now your routine has changed. And so your body does not, that voice doesn't want to exert any energy. Okay. So any energy it interprets as no, we want to keep the same. Mm-hmm. doesn't interpret good bad right or wrong it's going energy no energy okay and- so I think like actually knowing that kind of help like it helps helps like kind of reframe it for me it's like okay if that voice is just trying to like not exert energy and I'm tired then that's like a logical response right. of being like well I don't want to do the work but then like you're saying then if I was like okay, well, what is another option, right? Like what, if that's one option, like what are the others? And then I can hear myself like already being like, oh, fine, I'll just, I'll just do it. Right. Or you might say, okay, so I've been tired before. Like I've done this before. What did I do before? What maybe, you know, then maybe the game would come up for you. And I'm still, okay, I'm going to make a game and I'm going to quit if I get 10 calls out there or two leads or whatever that game. Or just call for like, the 50 minutes or 20 minutes, or mm-hmm. even like, I like to make bets. So like text my friend and be like, I'm going to, I'm going to make this amount of contacts or I owe you like whatever. Whatever. Uh, yeah. I, uh, you know, and that, and that brings up the other point that you brought originally, you made a game out of it, actually figuring out for you what make, what you, where you can set up accountabilities is so important because we can fool ourselves. Yeah, we can even not know, actually not know in our sub. Have you ever driven somewhere and had no idea how you actually got there? Don't remember locking your door. Don't remember, but you just got there. I mean, I never know like where I am or how I got places. So yes, every day, every day. (laughs) I was like, (laughs) oh, but you know, it's like, it's like you put your keys somewhere and maybe it's not where you normally put them. Right. And then you can't find them, but you don't even remember. It's like retrace your steps. Okay, yeah. I don't remember my steps. I got to stop and think about it. Yeah. So we can go, our sub, we're on autopilot. That's autopilot. And we're on autopilot a lot of our day. Mm-hmm. In fact, making calls. Well, that right? goes along with like, just not wanting to exert the energy just to right. keep like with the, oh, I don't want to live that life. Right. Right. It sounds so but, boring. You know, I mean, the good part of that is that when you want to, you have a lot of energy. So you don't actually have to exert energy. So you don't want to exert it. I think you don't want to exert it in saying, no, I don't want those negative thoughts. No, I can't do it. Because all you're doing is taking all your energy and focusing on what you don't Mm. want. Because energy is like finite, is it? It's not finite necessarily. It just, um, energy can, you can't define where it's going. Your energy can go to fear. Your energy can go you have energy. 
you can have more or less depending on food, water. There's many variables. True. Okay. You know, you, you know athletes, if you're an athlete, if you have an illness. But if you're going to spend it on something, like it's just as easy to your point to like maybe ask your brain like a question rather than trying to like stop it. I would think too that anytime you're trying to like stop something, it feels like it becomes more persistent. Well, it does. I mean, it does. It's a saying that which resist you resist persists. That's right. A saying, right. But you can just think about it. If I tell you, don't think about that pink elephant that's behind you. I'm going to do it. You're just going to think about it. That's all yeah. you can think about it. And you can test it on yourself. When you think I don't want to do something, all you think about is that you don't want to do it. Right. Exactly. Just like if you think about you want to do, I'm so excited. Fr I mean, it's Friday night and tonight I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to go meet my friend and we're going to social distance, but we're going to have a really great time. And I haven't seen her in so long. I'm so excited. Yeah. You know, it goes both ways. Right. That energy is fun. The other it's more, energy. It like fuels even more energy too. Yeah. Or it's not it exhausting. It does. Or if even if you're an introvert and maybe you don't get fueled that way, it's a lot less energy to be excited. Yeah. Than it is to be afraid. So, okay. So if we're as agents experiencing this, and we'll just stick with like the example of the call reluctance, right? Like we don't want to make the call. We don't want to like do the work in some way, whatever that work is. Mm -hmm. When your brain like starts chattering, you're saying, ask it like, what else is there? Like, what are the other ways? I actually do a two step. First I say, okay. Like I oh. just accept it. Okay. Accept it. Don't resist it. Okay. okay. That's a thought. I, you know, I'm tired. I don't, okay. Okay. And then wait a little bit, like take a minute, be okay with it. Like actually be okay with that. And then ask, because then you're finally like, you're like present. It's actually the, the, the power of being present hmm. to what you actually want, not the effect of a response or a thought that just came up because you were tired, not because you really think that. It's just that's the first response your subconscious thought about. Right. Because it's your next action. It could yeah. be no different if you had to clean the house or go pick up the kids or it doesn't matter what the next action was. Uh -huh. You don't feel like doing it. Right. This one just happens to be calls. Yeah. No, that's cool. I like that. I think that would be like fun to try and you could really do it like on anything. It's really fun to start thinking, okay, if you keep asking, you'll get more than one other option. You'll get like two or three or four. And it can be the game of, oh my gosh, there's all these options. And how you can, it can serve you is that you can actually start having a picture in front of you where you work of the different options. Yeah. Like you can have a face that put a visual to it because we much of what we, when we see something, we visualize it. When we see it, it becomes real to us, more real yeah. than even words. So when you find those things, you know, they do negative reinforcement and positive reinforcement. Mm -hmm. You can just put a funny monkey sign up with that smiling with a kiss and, and just laugh. And all of a sudden, nothing seems near as important. Yeah, it's not as hard. Right. That's right. so funny. That's true. Yeah. Right. That makes so sense. That's how you really create the tools that you need to just you're going to still have it and it's going to be okay. And then yeah. you do it anyway because it's really okay. It's just right. the significance of it's gone. Yeah. And but like you said, I like that it's like making a choice. Like, is this, if this is the way to do what you want to do and you've already decided that, mm -hmm. then saying okay to your little voice. And then you said, wait 30 seconds or a minute, even set a timer. And then yeah. be like, what are the other choices? And another voice may come up and say the same thing and just keep saying, okay, okay. <laughs> and just get up and start moving. You got to get dressed anyway. So you just get up and you move. And I mean, I did it the other day. It was so funny. I mean, I'm up, I'm like, I'm really tired. And I get up and I know I'm like, okay. And then I go in, I brush my teeth. I'm like, I'm really tired. And I'm like, okay. okay. And I just keep moving. And all of a sudden I'm outside taking the dog out and come back in and I'm ready to go. All of a sudden it just changed. And then I go, okay, so what do I want to do today? What do I need yeah. to do? the craziest thing that's but it's awesome fun and it's not it's not draining so you actually are a tired because if you keep focusing on how tired you are then you're going to be tired oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're exhausted and you won't be able to do it because that's all you've told your brain that's you know so I mean? weird we are some crazy so okay if people want to learn more about like what you do the brain health like how you can help them where is the best place for them to go 
So probably emailing me at Becky at Regain the Brain. Okay. Well, and, and I'll tag can, you in this too, so they can, they can uh, message you. Message me. Absolutely. And you can give them my phone number. They can call. And, okay. Um, I have a lot you of can give it on here. Oh, 859-992-4361. Nice. Yeah, great. Awesome. Well, thanks, Mom. That was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you. <laughs> have a good one. Have fun. Okay, take care. Hi guys, Monica Weekly here. You know how you're supposed to post about real estate every single day on Facebook? Yes, yes you do. And the reason is if we don't remind our Facebook friends what we do for a living and how we help people, they will forget about it. We know it's our job to inform, educate, and demonstrate what we do for a living. Well, I'm coaching agents all around the country and they understand that, but they're not doing it. And I ask them, why aren't you doing it? Probably just like you. And they said, Monica, we don't know what to post. Can we just borrow your stuff? Because I love creating Facebook posts. And these can often be used over on Instagram as well. So I said yes, and people were borrowing my stuff. So I created finally a product that you can sign up for for free. It is free, guys. There is no reason for you not to sign up for this. It's ghostposter.com, G H O S T. P-O-S-T-R, no E in there, just T-R, dot com. And what you're going to get is you're going to get a Facebook posting idea to your email every single day. So not only do you have this great idea, but you've been reminded, oh yeah, I need to post. And that's Monday through Friday. And if you don't love the post or you think, gosh, I'd like something else, well, you're also going to get access to a library of over 600 different posts for you to choose from by category. You're going to love it. Go sign up, ghostposter.com. Don't waste a minute. And then be sure to join the private Facebook group. All right, I'll see you in there. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a podcast.